My name's Keith Kramer, and I'm a partner in Kramer's Posy Patch. We're in Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania, and we are a 50-acre cut flower farm. We specialize in mainly specialty cuts, where we sell dried flowers, and we sell fresh flowers. We also sell seeds, have a few other ventures that we work on. I'm third generation flower grower. We've been doing this for a while. My grandparents uh, began flower growing in 1965, and uh, since then, been a lot of changes to how we do things. Uh, my grandfather was a small acreage tobacco grower uh, as a sideline business, and he was also a carpenter. My grandmother grew garden plants and things like that, and she would cut the flowers and dry them and sell them to people at uh, Central Market in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And my grandfather thought he knew better, and he used to like to tease my grandmother about how much uh, money she was making on this small venture. And uh, she got fed up with it and started keeping track of numbers. And once he realized the margins that were available when you're dealing with cut flowers, uh, he quickly changed his tune. And the next year, they were finished with tobacco and started growing flowers uh, as a sideline business. The idea of season extension has always appealed to us, both in uh, the dried market and the fresh market, more so with the fresh. The dried market, we were uh, tired, as most growers are, of getting one single frost and having that wipe out everything in the field. And then as soon as that frost is finished, you have warm weather for the next three weeks. So it was frustrating that everything had to be done before that one frost. We thought that a structure would probably save us the problems of uh, worrying about that one night when the temperature dropped too low. Five or six years ago, my father traveled to California to visit some West Coast growers to see how they did things out there. And that's when uh, he got his first look at a multiple bay tunnel structure, uh, basically a high tunnel meant to cover multiple acres. When he came back from the uh, trip to California, we decided that we could build our own tunnels having seen the design that they used in California. Uh, we successfully put together and welded quite a few legs and got it set up and we had an eighth of an acre covered and the first time the wind speed they approached uh, 15, 20 miles an hour, the whole structure came down. So we learned quickly that there's more to it than just mimicking what someone else is building. Um, it was about the time that that was blowing down that he was traveling again, this time in uh, Europe, visiting uh, seed trialers in Europe that he came across an advertisement for the Haygrove Company and uh, saw what they were doing in the multiple bay high tunnels. And that's what led us to the, the purchase that year of uh, our first acre, or our only acre of multiple bay tunnels right now. So this is our Haygrove tunnel. Uh, we have a structure that consists of six 24-foot bays, 24 foot being the width. The total length of the structure is 300 feet. Uh, clearance in here is about 12, 12 and a half feet at the peak. And uh, right now it is what we would consider vented for the summer. We have the plastic rolled towards the inside so it sheds water off the outside of the structure without creating balloons or full bags of water in here. This particular bay is Crested Celosia. We have two of these bays in the Crested Celosia. We decided to grow this one last year and this year. Uh, so this is the second year we've done this crop in here. By using the high tunnels, I can gain five weeks earliness with my coxcomb as compared to my outside grown crops. And uh, I don't know why it took so long to dawn on me that I should be doing this crop in here, but this has made us a lot of money. It's, uh, it loves the environment, we get good stem height. And generally right now outside, the plants are much shorter, just starting to put some blooms in and uh, not near harvest. We're probably two weeks away from harvest and we have been harvesting in here for the past two weeks. So that's right on schedule. Usually we expect four to five weeks earliness on this crop. In this tunnel, we have Asclepius in the outside beds and we have Lysianthus in the center beds. Uh, you'll notice in this tunnel, we have shade net over top. And the idea being that by cutting down on the light, we stretch the stems on the Lysianthus, which tend to be a short stem crop. They're much more saleable if they have nice long stems like these. The, when we tried to grow Lysianthus outside, we ended up with somewhere in the range of six to 10 inch stems. And you can see by doing it in the tunnels, we've been able to come up to right around three feet is where we're getting with our stem length at some of the taller varieties. This one's still probably about 28 inches on some of the shorter varieties. The Asclepius on the outside is not really, it doesn't need the shade, but we've been growing it in here because we needed a place to put it. It wasn't a specific plan. Um, the Lysianthus, we also grow on white plastic instead of the traditional black that we normally use. This helps keep the roots cooler, helps keep things, uh, during its growth period, it likes to have nice cool temperatures and it adds to the stem length, the cooler you can keep the roots. This is our hydrangea tunnel. This is uh, one of the directions we've chosen to go. 
we've started growing some hydrangea in the field and realized that it's a real high money crop. So we thought we would try it in the tunnels, gain a bit of earliness, and also get a nice quality product. Sometimes with hydrangea, you get petal burn when there's dew on the petals in the morning and you get direct sunlight onto the petals. It can make small marks on the petals and, and basically devalue the stems. Right now, uh, because there will be no rain hitting these and also condensation is not really too much of a concern inside the tunnels, we're getting very nice clean heads. And uh, these are first year, this is uh, Paniculatum grandiflora and this is uh, transplanted last August. So this is its first year of production really. And getting some really nice stem length out of these things. We've uh, changed our, our approach to growing in here with the, this being a perennial instead of four flat beds laid with plastic. We've shaped three raised beds in the tunnel, covered it wall to wall with the black ground fabric to keep the weeds down for the coming years and transplanted down through that onto these raised beds. When we first bought our high tunnel, one of the biggest lessons I had to learn was about temperature management. When we started out, I had an idea in my head that we would want the temperature to be somewhere in the mid 80s for ideal growing conditions. And I thought we would constantly be opening and closing the tunnels to maintain that temperature. Uh, as it turns out, what I should have been looking at was coming up with a, a high and low temperature that were acceptable. This is eventually where we came to. Uh, I placed recording thermometers in each one of the bays of our tunnels for the first year that we had it to kind of gain an understanding of how fast the tunnel heated, how much protection it gave us overnight and things like that. So as we learned more about the tunnels, I basically said, you know, I don't want it to go over 90 degrees during the daytime if it can be avoided. And I don't want it to go below 55 degrees in the evening if it can be avoided. So once my crew learned some of that, uh, venting became more of an automatic thing. And now in our fourth season, I give very little thought to temperature control at all because my team has learned where I want the temperature in those tunnels. As far as quality is concerned for the cut flower business, generally there is no such thing as a number two grade flower. Everything is number one or it goes onto the compost heap. So quality improvement was not necessarily something that we were shooting for because obviously we had figured out how to get a number one flower from the field. Uh, earliness was the big push. Uh, disease pressures have been reduced quite a bit. Uh, wet season diseases in general are non-existent inside a high tunnel. Dry season pests can be a bit more of an issue. Uh, we need to maintain good observation on spider mites and aphids are two particular pests that can be a problem. Powdery mildew can be a problem as well, but uh, for the most part, we've had good experiences. We've drastically reduced how many sprays we do as compared to the field. Uh, the growing environment on its own is uh, greatly modified early on in the season. Once we get the tunnels to the warm part of the season, we vent and keep it vented for the duration of the season. It offers a lot of protection from heavy rains and in the rare event of hail, which we definitely don't like to talk about hail at all, but we feel that the tunnels would provide some pretty substantial protection against hail because with cut flowers, even one blemish, the whole, the whole stem is ruined. With any investment, you want to know how fast things are going to pay back, and it was a big question in our minds how long it would take for these tunnels to pay for themselves. And from the loose figuring that we did in the first years, uh, we had come down to the fact that the tunnels had paid for themselves generally after two and a half to three seasons with our cut flowers. Um, there are other crops that pay back faster, but we felt that we were very satisfied with that because from this point forward, all the investment is paid, so now it's, it's profit.